SketchUp 2025 just introduced PBR rendering, something users have been looking for for years. And now the big question is floating around. Is it time to ditch your rendering software for rendering in SketchUp? Well, the answer is complicated. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first off, let's talk about what SketchUp's new PBR rendering actually does. So in the new version, you have the ability to toggle to a new rendered mode. When you activate this, this gives you the ability to add an environment, casting realistic lighting in your scene. Your materials now respond to that light inside of the scene itself, giving you the ability to create much more realistic looks. The new materials have additional slots for things like roughness, normals, and ambient occlusion. These can make your materials interact with lights in ways that are much more realistic than was previously possible inside of SketchUp. You can add your own custom materials and also adjust things like the metalness of objects. So the metalness is going to allow you to set if something is metal. If the object is metal, you would set it to one. If it's not metal, you'd set it to zero. And then you can adjust the roughness in order to adjust how much this is going to reflect. Now, notice that this is reflecting the light from your environment in your scene, which gives you much more realism in the actual scene itself. It's actually really easy to forget unless you toggle between the shaded mode and the rendered mode, how much additional detail you're getting with these environments. And that represents a significant step forward in the way that renderings and models can look inside of SketchUp. Now, Here's where things get tricky. While SketchUp's PBR engine is a massive step forward, it still has some serious limitations that might make you think twice before ditching your dedicated rendering software. The biggest one, lighting. So right now, SketchUp's render engine doesn't support full global illumination or things like bounce lighting or ray tracing. What does this mean? This means that say that you had a model like this one and you've got an environment where the bright point is over here. Well, if we go to the inside of this building, that bright point is off to the side, but it's being blocked by the walls. But what you're going to notice is even though it's being blocked by the walls, the only thing that you're going to see in reflections in your scene is the actual environment itself. This is using um, kind of rasterization techniques in order to simulate the way that light, light is going to work, but the light itself is not really being blocked. Notice how the interior of this scene is being lit as if this was an exterior, even though we're inside of a building. Now, compare this with something like a twin motion where if you apply a metal to a scene like this and then you use something like Lumen or the path tracing, notice how that light is gonna come in in a much more realistic way. I've not done a ton of setup with this, but just to demo the concept, notice how looking out here, the light is coming in, but then it's being blocked by objects in the scene. And then if you path trace it, the effect is even more pronounced. The lighting is much more realistic in the way that it works with environments. In addition, objects like this cube are actually going to occlude the light, meaning those objects are going to show up and affect the way that the light shows up in the scene, which is a significant difference compared to the results that you're getting inside of something like SketchUp. So notice this box right here doesn't show up at all inside of that reflection on your object, and it won't because this isn't using any kind of ray tracing. The other limitation Right now, there's no sorts of artificial lighting inside of SketchUp. So even if you're inside of a model, the result is going to look like you're outdoors rather than indoors because you can't light the scene with any kind of interior lighting like point lights or spotlights or anything like that. Where when you use a program like Twin Motion, there's artificial lights that you can bring in to affect the interior lighting of a scene in order to get different results. Another thing to consider is performance. PBR textures add a ton of additional data, as do HDRI images. And so if you're working with large models with lots of environments, you start, might start noticing lag, slow performance, or larger file sizes. This is due to the additional information that's needing to be stored inside of your models. So this can be especially important if you're doing some kind of client work. You don't want your models grinding to a halt because they're huge. Note, this model right here that's saved with a couple additional HDRI images and no other changes, the file size has gone from 45 megabytes to 178 megabytes. So these files can get really large and kind of unwieldy really quick. 
Now, in my opinion, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't use SketchUp's rendering engine. I mean, just looking at the exterior of this model, when you toggle over and looking at what it does to the brick right here, you do get a lot more depth and really interesting looks inside of your scenes. And I think it's something that is definitely promising in a lot of different areas. So one area is if they ever do add path tracing, that could get really interesting. Though, honestly, that's not really the kind of work that I want to do inside of SketchUp. I'll probably go to an external rendering engine for that. However, adding a little bit of additional pop to your images, I think this does a great job and I think it looks a lot better. Now, does any of this mean that you should completely ignore SketchUp's PPR rendering? Definitely not. In fact, there's a few situations where this is actually a real game changer. First off, if you need fast in-model visuals for client presentations, material studies, or even quick realistic previews, this tool makes that process way easier and you never have to leave SketchUp. It's also perfect if you're doing quick visualizations, or if you're doing something like landscapes where full photorealism isn't required, because it allows you to get that little extra pop out of an image without having to do a whole bunch of additional work. One area that I find extremely promising is combining rendered images with line work drawings and layout in order to create more interesting looking visualizations and plans. So back to the big question. Should you replace your rendering software with SketchUp's PBR engine? For most users, the answer is probably not. While I actually find this to be an extremely promising addition to SketchUp, it's definitely not a full PBR replacement yet. If you need true photorealism, dedicated lighting, and more realistic results, the dedicated rendering engines are going to work better and give you better results. But in my opinion, that doesn't make this a bad addition. I think it allows you to add extras to your visuals that you couldn't before. And I think with it being a brand new feature, this is something that's gonna grow and develop over time. If you do wanna learn more about how to create realistic renderings, make sure you check out the Twin Motion Essentials, which is available as a part of the SketchUp Essentials course. But for now, I'd love to hear from you. How do you feel about the new render engine? Are you excited about it? Are there things you'd like to see? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.